right, very good morning. I hope that you are doing well this very cold Wednesday morning right here in Nairobi. Uh, but I don't know how, what it, how it looks like wherever you are. But nonetheless, I hope it is a good morning. After that uh, discussion by <laughs> Ayub, I don't say the nickname I give him. Uh, we want to move forward. Today is Wednesday. It is health and lifestyle. One of the most important things that impacts everybody's lifestyle is the financial aspect. Uh, you have seen so many, uh, if you're a business person uh, or just... Uh, you have so many options available to you from money lending apps and if you're a business now banks always most, almost all banks have a specific package for uh, business, small business uh, an SME or a business that wants to upscale all of them have different names that are very exciting and look very good but then how do you wade through some of these waters how do you um, decide what to do when do you even know, hey, maybe, maybe you don't even need credit. Maybe you just need to manage your resources well and you move to the next situation. Well, to help me with that discussion, I have uh, our able panelists here and allow them to introduce themselves. I'll start with uh, the man in the suit who also has the unfortunate, everything about him is proper except his choice of a football club. But go ahead and introduce yourself. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Uh, my name is Amos Ngahu. Um, I run a company called Money Clinic, mm -hmm. where we offer financial solutions, especially on personal finance. All right. Good, sir. Thanks, Willis. My name is Steve, Steve Indruhohi. I'm the marketing manager at Tala. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's start there. So, of course, what is good credit? Let's start there. If, if you are, uh, you know, you want to know, the, we have something called a credit score. Uh, we have threats to that credit score at CRB and all that. But what is a credit score? Is it, uh, how do they tabulate it? Okay. Think, think of a credit score as a report. Okay. And this is a report that will show you what loans, what debts you've taken, and then how you're repaying them. Simply put. Mm -hmm. And then... As with every score, there is an indicator of if you're doing well or if you're doing poorly. So you'll, generally speaking, you'll have a good or you'll have a bad, right. or le let's say in default. Mm -hmm. So good simply indicates you're repaying your debts on time. Mm -hmm. And then poor indicates you've missed some payments and over time this degenerates. Mm -hmm. So I think of it as a number that starts from some credit reference, some CRBs, mm -hmm. credit reference bureaus, have the numbers from zero, others from one, but higher is better lower is worse. So someone with a good credit score would have something like 900 and somebody with a bad one would have something like uh, less than 100. Mm -hmm. yes. So what makes you have, a, what makes you have a, a bad one? A bad one means you're not paying uh, your, your debt or you're mismanaging or you miss payments. What gets you there? Right. Luckily, it's many things. It's not just one thing that gives you a bad score. Okay. So think of it this way. If it starts high, it gets eroded over time. So a good example of how that would happen is, in the example of Tala is, you would take a loan and then you would not repay it. Then we would make an, we would make an attempt to contact you, but you would be unreachable. So that loan would be marked as in default. Then you would go to another digital lender and repeat. So what happens over and time- you do the same in the bank. Exactly. Right. So all these financial institutions are reporting that, Willis, for example, forgive me for using you as okay. an example. This is a hypothetical. It is a hypothetical <laughs> one. Yes. So they will indicate that said person is actually taking on a lot of debt or they are not repaying. Mm -hmm. And then all something else that could happen is sometimes you can have just too many debts because if one of them does go wrong, it jeopardizes your ability to repay. Mm -hmm. So that number fluctuates. And then conversely, if you repay on time and then you just take what you need over time, you can also repair it. So it's not an end all be all if you have a bad credit score. Meisha. No, not like that. All right. And so I must, what, what, you know, people take for granted the importance of having, you know, good credit. I mean, all the way, of course, some, some people, I've had discussions with some students who are saying, when you see to Kishachukwa help, already to Nanza life in a minus, mm -hmm. because to Konakadeni already governor to die. Then you go now and take the other money lending apps, then you take bank loans and all this. What is the importance of having, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> good credit? Well, I think the very, the very foundation of debt was meant to help people leverage on other people's money. Mm -hmm. So if I don't have enough to do, uh, it would actually be wise for me to capitalize and leverage on your money. But now we have a problem. We have a culture that started very early. We have a culture whereby some of us were being sent to the shop 
to uh, Willie's shop and get bread, milk, or something else, and then dad will come and pay. Andika kwa kitabu. Andika kwa kitabu. Right. I know that your parents didn't have money. They just didn't like the, probably the convenience of sending you with cash. Probably they wanted to pay their bills end month. Mm. So we earlier in life learned to borrow for consumption. And what is happening now is that we have taken that as a way of life. So you'll find that even when times are hard and you can't repay, what happens? You're listed negatively on CRB, you're borrowing from everybody from Paul to pay Peter. And now the challenge comes in, even when now you, um, let's say you're a student, like you said, you started in, 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 in a deficit, you started in, in, in debt. Mm -hmm. So well, let's say you're seeking a job in a financial institution, they tell you what? We need clearance from CRB. Then you're busy calling Willis, do you know someone in CRB who can, <laughs> who can help me do it? Right. And you see, we lose opportunities. And that is why it is very important for us, first of all, to address the culture of debt. How did you uh, how, how have you learned it? Is it that you've seen uh, people borrow for consumption? And that's why sometimes we're blaming the government borrowing for consumption in the past. And what has happened is that that is a true reflection of how Kenyans yeah. we are operating. So what would be an example? What, what to, paint it, to bring it home, what is borrowing for consumption? <coughs> borrowing for consumption is, is a very simple uh, plan. Let's say, uh, let's even use the most common debt Kenyans have. Uh, Today is one. Today's uh, third, fourth. Third, fourth. Is it? Is it okay. No, today's th <laughs> third. <laughs> All right, yeah, third. third today's third. third yeah. Huh? Yes. Let's say I'm paid on fifth, mm -hmm. and you you're paid on thirtieth. Then I'll come to you and tell you, Pesa to a jengia, Willis. Just mm -hmm. give me five k. I'll I'll I'll, I'll sort you out. Kingia to evil like this. I sort you out. Now, if you look keenly, the money I've borrowed is not an emergency. Is money probably you are going somewhere, and I needed to buy something. Oh just fit in the group because let's say we are supposed to have co uh, contributed towards a certain project we are doing or we are going out and then I borrow from you. And the same thing, you'll find that people are borrowing from these digital apps um, to pay fare, to pay fuel, you understand? Not knowing that the very primary reason, because we understand times are tough, but the primary reason you're borrowing is because there was a problem when your resources were there and you planned them poorly. And this is not sustainable. You cannot borrow your way out of poverty. You can't. So it's just money that you borrow that is not invested for a return, mm -hmm. but is money that goes directly to an expense. Okay. Yeah. And so then, uh, if somebody is a business, and um, you know everybody, you know, you know, in this election, everybody threw out the word hustler. It's not that we are campaigning for it, but hustler fund is also something that's there. President now saying that uh, I think the ceiling is going to be moved to 100,000, between 100,000 to 300,000. So if you're a, a trader who's, who's watching right now and uh, they want to build, first of all, you know, that credit. You know, we, are, we are <laughs> normally people say, ukitaka kutengeneza credit, fanya hivi, ukilipwa, ingiza pesa kwa account, itoe, ingiza tena, utoe, ingiza pole pole, utoe. So is that the way to do it? How do you build and then also how do you maintain good credit? It's a good question, Willis. So think of it this way. If, let me use myself as an example. Let's say I'm a small business operator, SME. Right. How we do it in terms of building a credit is, first of all is, and I always say this, do you really need to take on that credit to run your business? Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. Not all businesses necessarily require an injection of capital to get started. Mm -hmm. So for a start is, I always say have taking credit as a last resort. Because when you start a new business, everything is coming at you. You need to buy capital. You have unforeseen circumstances. There's just too many things coming at you. So the fewer things you have to worry about, in my opinion, the better it is for you. Mm -hmm. So then let's assume you have ticked all those boxes. And let's even give an example. You've received an LPO, and this LPO is guaranteed, and you know you will be paid back on time. Then in a case like that, you can look and say, fine, there is no way I can fulfill this PO without borrowing some money on it. In such a case, then I would consider it in the sense that if I needed a thousand shillings and I was short 200 or 500, then I will raise what I have and I will borrow the difference. Mm -hmm. The challenge starts to come in. If you go to an app like ours, we will give you a certain limit. Maybe you needed a thousand and then you're given 10,000. The discipline is where it gets tricky because how many people will just take what they need and leave the other 9,000 for later? Temptation happens. So there's always that temptation to, there's always that challenge to resist taking on what more than you need. Then beyond that, I always say the bigger thing is, think of it as 
another example, think of it as a road trip. If you're going to Mombasa, you have to plan it out. I will need, if I'm driving, I will need X amount of fuel. I will need to make sure my car is running well. If it's SGR, I'll need to pay the fare and so on and so forth. So similarly with the business, whatever amount of money you're borrowing, have a plan to repay it. Mm -hmm. I think what people do go wrong is you get the money because it's so easily accessible. Two, three taps in a button on your phone, you have the money, but nobody really thinks about how we'll repay it. Watch how we get the money now, tomorrow we'll figure out how we repay it. That's generally where the challenges start to come in. Yeah. And so that kind of attitude then, you know, uh, you're a, you know, you, you talk a lot about people's relationship with money and how it should be because already you notice you're boring for consumption. Uh, then, like you said, the ceiling is 10,000, but I really just need 1,000. But if I take the 10, you know, I, you, know you lie to yourself and say, you know, it's just a cousin to save. He puts like, he has a I save. Uh, and then after you, Sasa, you know, you start planning to do other things, you know. So what, how does one, first of all, develop that discipline? To say that I only need 1,000, I'll even go and ask for 1,000. I won't send one message to five people asking for 1,000, <laughs> saying that Mwenyata atakubali, atanitumia. Then Zote, if Zikingia Zote 5,000, I'm like, oh, look, I have 5,000. How do I get that discipline, even as, a, <clears throat> as, I'm, as an individual first, before I even take it to now I own a business? I think in, in my experience with people, one of the things I've learned and which is very difficult is behavior change. Mm. If I have, I've had a culture all along, that's how, that's how I've seen uh, the people around me spending money. You borrow and uh, you earn money, uh, middle of the month, there's too much month at the end of the money. <laughs> so what happens, you're busy looking for all these apps to borrow right. to push through the month. The thing is, uh, we need to understand, and a very good example is COVID. You have increased, every time your income goes, your expenses go up. So the day your income comes down for any reason, whether it was COVID, there was total, uh, you know, uh, uh, did, uh, like total reduction on your salary. Some mm -hmm. people were earning zero and some people earning half. So it is at that time that you realize, oh my goodness, I have actually been operating in a negative uh, in a negative manner. So cultivating that discipline starts with um, how much money do I really need to survive? The other thing is, do, am I always having that disposable cash at my disposal? Let's say you earn 100,000, but to your total expenses is about 50,000 and you have no investment. So you begin now to increase your expenses to fit the income that has come. So that's why you'll find that people are always borrowing, mm -hmm. borrowing to sustain that kind of a lifestyle. And the discipline will always have to come. Uh, you can choose to cultivate it early by learning to live within your means. Right. Uh, or you can learn later after all, everything has gone, <laughs> has gone here. South. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, so it, 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 is, it is a hard thing, but it needs, it needs that, it needs that discipline. It needs you to, first of all, to evaluate where did you get your culture? Are you addressing it? Why are you doing the things you do? Do I really need, uh, if for instance, I'm going to, uh, I need to fuel somewhere and I don't have money. Why am I going to apps? And I can tell guys, listen, for this trip, I don't have enough money. Can we actually? raise for the fuel because mm. at the end of the day it's not about you you know having even if <laughs> even if you're in a big status or you have a big job you don't have to fit to people's expectation right okay right. so it's ha it has to be you telling guys you know what I, I can't afford this and i'm not fully saying and learning that language of saying no no yeah yeah it is what uh <coughs> Eliud kipchoge says learn to have vitamin n, n. <laughs> and <Kusema> no, <laughs> which is very difficult. You know, it seems, uh, and it would like look like a simple thing to call and say, "Hey, listen, man, Mimi, sikuji, bona, sina pesa, unless nakuja out kama nani baia." In fact, I'll give you an example. When I was buying my first car, I think I was 26, so I qualified for 600,000. Uh, that is from hey, the, my employer. Yeah, <laughs> My employer right. would give us a car loan. I think it was at 6%, but I qualified for 600. But the car I needed was an NZD, white in color, VVTI engine that mm. was going for 850. Wow. Now, guess what? I had some savings in the circle. And you know, in the circle, you can borrow three times. I had 120. But the only money I needed was 200 to top it up, 250. Mm. Guess what? You think I borrowed the 250? I borrowed the entire 360. 
Now, if you ask me what I did with the difference, I can probably tell you I <laughs> bought a bigger couch because I moved into a bigger house, which had parking. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Only for me to look at the deductions later, and I was thinking HR must have done an illegal deduction on my pay. Mm -hmm. And that's the time I realized that for the next four years, I was not doing anything. Yet, someone had told me, why don't you buy a second-hand car? And then probably something you can afford, even borrow from the circle and then use the other money for something more useful. But I learned later. Okay. So it has to be, it's, it's more, most of the decisions that people make when they're borrowing are emotional. Mm. You're trying to prove something because there's pressure where you're working. In fact, my boss was telling me, you're the only one work, walking like an animal in your position. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you see the pressure was becoming wesa. <laughs> yeah, but at the, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. Right. Yeah, it really doesn't matter. It's, it's, so, so when it comes to business, um, what are some of the mistakes that, you know, some people make when it comes to, when it comes to money and borrowing and, and such. What are some of them? I know there are many, but what could be like the maybe three? Okay. Let me try to find some relevant examples so we can relate. And the point of these examples is for all of us to learn. No one is holier than thou. All right. We have all made mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> right. There was a trend a while back when quail eggs were the big deal. Mm. Remember what happened? Yes. People who did not know a thing about poultry farming all went and borrowed some money, went and bought quail eggs supply and demand shifted and suddenly there were more quail eggs than the market could absorb and people were looking at straight up losses. Mm -hmm. The, the point I'm trying to make, the, the reason number one would be, first of all, just avoid jumping on a trend. I know it happens and it looks cool and you open social media, meet and now everyone is just posting hashtag this, hashtag that. Mm. It, I think it has a lot to do with self-discipline as well. You have to look and say, you know what, my business, let's say, Willis, you, you're a PR executive. Uh, let me just focus on what I understand. Right. Maybe Steve is killing it, selling cars, but that doesn't necessarily mean you can also do it. So mm. resist the temptation to jump on the newest trend. Trends do come and go. It is not as, for lack of a better word, sexy to miss out on a trend. But you know what? Good financial habits are seldom sexy, but these are foundations that are built over time that now do take hold. Then something else I would also say is, Look at people who've gone before you. Like if you're trying to be a car dealer, if you're trying to resell clothes, even Gikosh, people who go buy camera clothes, Wanoshezo Manguo, Zidani Kwamoy Avenue. These guys understand there's there's a way, there's a way you can upskill yourself. Right. Why are you reinventing the wheel when people have gone before you and they can learn? Mm -hmm. And in these days of the internet you can get everything you need literally there. I was told people can even service that you can learn how to service your car from right. the internet. So right. empower yourself. Just Don't have go, the right tools. Right? Because I tried and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh. Also know your limitations. If exactly. You, there you go. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Right. Yeah. So the other thing is also look at the ones who've gone before you do learn. Then I think lastly, I would also say is if um, how would they, we call it a proximity principle. Mm -hmm. So let me give you an example. If I want to be a news presenter, then I want to hang around citizen, right? I want to meet people like you then. I'll probably start fetching the coffee. But over time I'm learning, I'm hearing how people talk. I get to interact, I get to be seen. So by being closer to the sort of business you want to go, you, you want to grow into can have a big difference. Yes. And then lastly, like we also say is, um, most of these business groups do have meetings. We've got small small business owners that have social media clubs. They meet once a year. A brilliant forum to network. You can go and, and get people who can be potential suppliers, people who can be potential customers, and network. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Yeah. And then when it comes to that, the other thing is also uh, the point of the, the, the If we are being really just basing even just on the price of the dollar, or the Watch out a dollar, dollar to men and barley, bay uh, pain at the pump. It's a popular, um, you know, ID we put at the bottom of the screens here whenever we're talking about fuel prices these days. Just say last year, October, um, and this month, the price is almost, we can say, astronomical. Um, the dollar in January was 126. Now, in a 140. So, chumvi for the very first time. <laughs> so, we are dealing with a situation where there is a lot of pressure, uh, Amos. So, with all this pressure, that means that not just 
just daily daily bread, but then it means the cost of doing business. Every time the uh, fuel prices go high, the cost of doing business goes yeah. up. Yeah. So when where how do I survive without uh, what they say other people's money? How do I survive without yeah. a loan? Yeah, yeah. I mean, when when you talk of the fuel <laughs> prices, there's a there's, a, there's something I learned, and I think I posted it. I realized that the lack of it put us all in one level. Mm -hmm. The lack of fuel. Lack of fuel. Mm -hmm. Because I remember that day, it was on a Monday, and I realized I had a quarter tank, and there's no fuel, and there's no hope. And I realized that I was making unnecessary rounds. So I decided I'll only move this week, I'll only move one day. I'll put all my activities in one day and move if I have to. That actually reduced my fuel budget significantly. And what I can tell uh, our viewers is that if everything has gone up and you're still earning the same income, whether you're in business or employed, and you have not adjusted, then you're in denial. And soon so you, not adjusting means you scale not, down. You have not scaled down. Yeah. And it's not necessarily scaling down. You have to actually take control of your movement. If, for instance, we live in the same area, why don't I pick you up? If I have to take maximize and work from home, I can do that. And especially business people, you have to understand and, and look at it this way. If you go right now to downtown, I was buying a spare part and I was looking for it. And when I found it, you're either paying through Visa or withdrawing the money from your mobile phone. Because this businessman is not willing to incur the cost of transaction. You get my point? So what does that mean? They respect that one shilling, two shilling. So nowadays, when you go to payment, a lot of people will tell you withdraw the cash so that they also make the money out of, a, out of their agency. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the things that some of the businesses have, have done to mitigate some of this cost. See, evaluate your habits, your spending habits, because it's very, it's, some of the things we spend on are quite unnecessary, very unnecessary. And for me, I realized I have been moving unnecessary. So there are days I work from home and there are days I have to go. And if it's a client, I make sure I don't use my vehicle. They have to organize for me to get to the, to the venue so that the small expenses can actually cover your other end right. of, of expenses. Right. Because it's, it's quite expensive. Yeah. You, you can imagine there was a time that car, the NZDE that I bought that time, I used to fill it with 3,000 bob, full tank. My friend, no one toy like greater than you understand. <laughs> 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 and with bad sound music, yeah. you're disturbing everybody yeah. else so that they know. But right now, to fill the same vehicle is going to cost you between eight and ten thousand. So we have to adjust and say, yes, the cost of living has gone up. Is there anything I can do about my income right now? No. But can I do something about my expenses? And one of the things that and and and, and Steve handled it very well is the issue of another mistake that people do we are borrowing from too many sources and once we do that it becomes you know what they say bill balance is the one who said that debts are like small children the smaller they are the more noise they make <laughs> <laughs> so uh, really if i owe you two million raburu will you just call me any any other time yes but if i owe you two three thousand from that shop that is the money you need for the stock <laughs> you are 1200 yes Nasim yako ene tu of kidogo. Why? The vendor will be on your case. Yeah. So I feel like <laughs> to reduce that pressure, let's not let's not borrow from all these other so so many apps. Some of these things that we call emergencies, if you wait, they will look worse tomorrow. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So just have the patience of seeing how you can work within your control, within your means, because at the end of the day. Um, we we only have we can only have control of much. Right. We don't have control of what is happening with the dollar. Right. Yeah. And and and, and Steve, then uh, in the same using the same kind of thinking. So as a business, when am I good to take a loan? And when am I saying, okay, you know what? I think I'm gonna let me stick this out. Let me wait. Like you said, maybe the emergency will look uh, worse tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. W w how do I balance that? Okay, that's a good question. Look at it this way. I think, and this is my this is my opinion. I, I have some friends who double up in businesses, and you can see. I think sometimes looking at the outside, you feel you're, like you're the only one whose business is not growing as fast. Let me use let me go back to the example of the kayak. You're like, how come 
my neighbor here is, seems to be selling more units. They must be doing something right or I must be doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. The point I'm trying to make with all of this is I think you, you have to run your own race. Everyone is in this everyone is in their own challenging situation differently. So ideally your own competition should be yourself. So if you did better today than you did yesterday, then that works. So let me tie it back to a business. Right. In such a cases, do you really need to have that money? We have this thing around, does that cost have to be incurred right now? One of my friends is a really good saying, and this is something like, if it has to be right now, the answer is no. So certain things, if it has to be right now, if this deal has to be done right here, right now, you have to use some vitamin N, like you said. <laughs> yes. Because that pressure is what sets you up, and under pressure, you probably don't make the best of decisions. Right. I'll also look at it as most businesses tend to be cyclical in nature. So look at tourism. There's a high season, makuna low season. Even, even let's see, uh, vehicle salespeople, they'll tell you in January, kumekauka, but December, everyone's buying. I think what I, would, what I would recommend people do is when the business is good during high season and the money is crazy, always remember there's a low season that's following that up. So do put some money aside. The Englishmen say, make hay while the sun shines. So some of these emergencies you get can actually be offset by your high seasons. And then like we also say lastly is make a plan. If I want to be, if I have a kiosk and I want it to be a chain of kiosks in five years, how do I start from here to there? With a plan, you can break down that elephant into bite-sized bite chunks. So, so that's a similar analogy I would use. Mm. Don't always necessarily run to, to get that money, because even if you qualify for the two million, it has to be paid back. How will you pay, pay it back? The dollar goes up, then suddenly the interest rate on that loan goes up. So suddenly your repayment, which you could afford, now you can't. So I still think slow but steady is ultimately still the best way to get yeah. there. Slow but steady is uh, wins the race. Wins the race. <laughs> All right. And in the same vein then, uh, Amos, then how can I, because credit is not always bad. Mm -hmm. Like borrowing is not bad. Yeah. Um, so how then can I make sure that I'm borrowing as an MSME, as an SME, so that I'm now growing my business. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm borrowing. And, and also, okay, let's answer that first because I also have another question because I, I was having a discussion with some people uh, and they were saying like, you know, uh, sometimes I can borrow to invest. Can I deal? Can I, let's say there is a um, bond, for example, that, and you can get like five million. So I'm going to take this five million mm -hmm. and I want to put it in a bond and that's going to be my investment. Mm -hmm. um, I think let's start with that one, then you can talk about the MSMEs because that one is, I guess it gets more people. Yeah. Can you borrow to invest in terms of, you know, direct? That, that's, is that a good idea? That's a very tricky question because uh, even as Steve was sharing, you know, I, I tell people there was a time I was fired in a construction site. And it, I mean, that was so humiliating. I've never felt so useless mm -hmm. because you're thinking this is the easiest job you can get. And sometimes you've seen people uh, do something, they're less qualified than you. But the way they do it and the way they are thriving, you're even wondering which God do these guys worship. <laughs> yeah. But you dare invest in that. For someone, because I have seen people who've borrowed to invest, and some of them, there's something they know that we don't. Mm. Okay. And that takes me now to the issue of investment to the purpose. What is the ultimate goal? Or what is the drive towards that? Someone shared that today's, uh, today's uh, man is struggling with two things. Emotional incompetence, which is now you're not able to balance your emotions and know when, <coughs> when you're desperate and when you want to leverage on other people. Because that's the other mistake people do. You're desperate, you want your business to succeed yesterday. But instead of other people's money, you're actually desperate. So there's actually no difference between you and your business. You want to, it, your expenses are business expenses. You've not even separated. So to answer your question, that would be, uh, would not be very advisable unless there's something you really understand. Right. You really understand. Because I've seen people borrowing and they've lost everything and then now for years they're paying their debt, which actually slows down you from achieving some of the goals you wanted to achieve. Mm. So uh, for me, I wouldn't advise that. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't really advise. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, and, and what if it's in a situation where, like, say, ten thousand is available, mm -hmm. and uh, you take the ten thousand and say, "Sour, I needed one thousand. What can you save me eight? <laughs> what about in that situation, Steve? <laughs> Just know this way: 
that that ten thousand you got, there's a certain amount of interest that was calculated based on the amount you took. Right. So, in a perfect world, your savings would generate so much more dividends that it would offset the interest charged. But that's a perfect world, and unfortunately, we do not live in a perfect world. Right. I think people overestimate when they are planning how rosy it will be. Sometimes they don't adequately prepare for the, for the shock, so at least the things that could go wrong. And let me just belabor that example. CBK adjusted the lending rate, for example, and that forced most of the banks to adjust the interest rate people are paying on their loans. Right. So imagine you had your 8K, you only needed 1K which you could comfortably pay, then now, then they offer you an option. So either you pay a higher, what do you call it, a higher installment, mm -hmm. or they increase the number of installments. Right. So it's just leaving you in debt for longer, debt you didn't necessarily have to. I'll just go back to my example. And this is not easy. Just take what you need. That should ideally make your life easier. And with, with big decisions, I know some people do this on a personal level. You can delay certain big decisions. You can set a milestone. So. Look at it this way and say, if I have my kiosk, you can say when I turn over, for example, my first 100,000, let, let, let me think about hiring somebody. You can put in milestones that once you hit them, it gives you space to think about something bigger. That's how I'd look at it. Right. Le don't just take the money and go crazy. What if it goes south? Right. And I know some people will say, don't be negative. <laughs> what if it wins? But you, you can't live like that, not in this day and age. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. And, and, and that's the thing, because the other thing we have as a habit is Nangoja deal. You know, and then because uh, maybe Steve has told me, Willis, uh, there is a one million check here. For MC services, yes, that is my official rate. <laughs> so I'm kidding, but still. So now, already I'm, I'm thinking on the, today's third we said. So on the fourth, which is tomorrow, mm. I know I'm going to be cut a check yeah. of uh, one million. So today, I walk into a place and I see uh, shoes. I say, ah, oh, these shoes are, you know, maybe 15,000. Men's shoes are expensive. 15,000. I say, ah, I can get, because anyway, I'm getting uh, a million tomorrow. Nikesho too. Yeah. Then, Gioni, here comes Steve. We'll sorry, but we we'll push the event to another day. And then, that, but that happens to a lot of people. Working, how do you break that? Working with money you don't have. Because you've been promised, you know, like, Kesho nakupatia. Kesho, Kesho nakupatia. Guaranteed. Guaranteed, yeah. You know, Willis, I, I run a class called Money Gossip every month. Eh? Right. And I got a very interesting story similar to what you're talking about. So this guy is a contractor, and he got this deal from a certain county. And you, have, you understand what has been having, ha, ha, yeah. happening, eh? Yeah. And so over time, he's incurring expenses. So he does work. Uh, he got the first payment, so he was able to fast track and finish. So then he got... Uh, he got funded by a certain institution. And what happens now, before this payment comes, this guy is still incurring expenses. Guys need to be paid. Uh, he has his own personal expenses. And when you look at now his expenses, what he has paid people and what he owes this, uh, sometimes he'll take over drafts, is actually approaching the amount of money he will be paid. And that tells you something. Before you go to that debt, as a business, can you start looking at other internal or smaller incomes? I tell people money does not stay where it is needed. It stays where it is respected. Start working with the small money. Start looking at the small money that can actually be able to pay your staff. I've seen, you've seen other people having mobile uh, withdrawing uh, shops right. downtown. Yes, yes. But only be Biashara, but they're still having that. Yes. They have, they're selling airtime. They're selling sodas, you know, just to take care of that expense. Because if you have a front uh, manager office in a shop and you're paying them 20000 or uh, 30000 every day you need to raise a thousand bob, isn't it? Mm. What if it can be raised from those small uh, incomes that you're making there? So we have to really look at it this way. What are some of the things that we can do over and above our businesses in a small way to be able to supplement our income so that we are not accruing expenses as we wait for the big money? Right. Because they actually say that <laughs> you're as good as your last performance, right? <laughs> and your, 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 your last performance can also be your biggest enemy. 
you get. So um, I'm not talking about Manchester. Don't look at me. But anyway, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but however, yeah. But however, we 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 have. We have to be very, very proactive. Right. And I remember there was a time I was struggling with debt. I have gotten for a contract somewhere outside the country, and then they started to fight. So that big contract that was to come is not coming, and you're here, you've resigned. You understand? So I had to look at some of the things I can do. I could give people talks. I have not invested anything. It's only my time. Can I be able to capitalize on that so that for now I can survive on that small income right. as I wait for the big income? Right. Because the worst thing you can have is that disposable cash that you mm -hmm. had not planned for. <laughs> yes. I have been in that particular situation where we had planned my side hustle, shot and executed programs, delivered it to a, a particular station. Don't, don't, don't worry. A particular <laughs> station. And there was a, the payout was going to be 23 million. Mm -hmm. And I went out to DT Dobie. <laughs> <laughs> not the showroom to a friend who was working there because he was selling his car and I got his car went over to a, another credit facility mm. wrote post dated checks ah, minta kwa nalipa ngathi hata ndo hizi hapa tawacha nayo boom 12 of them and then that, that was like a Thursday we were supposed to be paid next week on Wednesday wake up on Monday mm. there's a statement on social media that this company has closed down <laughs> Why? So I know what it means to you know try to work with money that you don't have. It's it's quite uh, quite something. All right. So anytime we 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 borrow as well, there's some there's some risks that we have uh, as a business. What are, what are those risks that I'm looking at uh, when 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 I when I borrow some money for you know and, and 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 it could be that I can actually I've done the numbers, I've done everything, and I can comfortably work with this. I'll still pay staff. I'll still do all these things. But what, what, what risk should I be aware of when I'm borrowing? Okay. I'll, I'll, I like what Amos is saying. I liken a business to an individual. Right. So there are emergencies. Mm -hmm. Let me use my kiosk example because it's very relatable. I may be a kiosk operator. God forbid I have a medical emergency and I can't work and I have no person I can leave the shop to. Right. So emergencies are a part of life. So I would say you have to plan for emergencies. And how you do for this is raise a sinking fund. Like I was saying, see, businesses have a high season and low course. season. So do set some money aside. Right. This is not easy. This, this calls for discipline. And this is also where you look and you say, as Willis or as Steve, I know if I get a big commitment, just, just an email saying I will give you this job, I go on a spending spree. Right. You have to know your, what do you call it, your pitfalls and you put in place guardrails. <laughs> just help yourself. Right. Now, if that is you, then you have to make sure uh, you, how do I say it? No, no immediate plans that are made before the money has hit the account. Mm -hmm. So know yourself. I, on Tell the other you, hand, right? It's in there. Right. Right. I tend to be a geek. I love, I love numbers. But then I can also get lost in my numbers. Sometimes mm -hmm. you overanalyze, you overanalyze, but the world is built differently. Right. So I'm trying to say, as a business person, number one is to plan for emergencies. Those ones will happen. And, and as Stella, we've observed a number of things. Medical emergencies actually derail most people's ability to pay. The other one, I will not call an emergency. I'll just put it there as a cyclical need is school fees next week to Nakutana. Mm. School fees is always there. So for one reason or another, that is, is one, of the mis one of the places people borrow a lot, a lot from Tala to pay school fees. And since you know it will be happening every three months or every X times or number in a year, plan for that. Because what but happens... How, okay, sorry, uh, yeah. sorry to cut you short, but how do you plan? You know, sometimes uh, <laughs> with this, uh, all these changes that happen, I mean, I guess, I guess that maybe what you're saying is you really need to be disciplined. Because sometimes you have planned and then it just... Doesn't work. You're fired, maybe. Okay. Or something like, so how do you... Like, as you're planning, maybe after, that's the next question. Like, how do you make sure, like, your plan is, what do they call it, foolproof? Foolproof. Yes. Okay, let me use two. So in my kiosk example, every day you're bringing in money. Right. What do most people tend to do? Pesa ya biashara unakula stock. So you don't leave business money as business. You, mm -hmm. you take some of it, you take some of the unga in the shop and you go and you consume. And that starts to be your undoing. It starts with just unga today or some salt tomorrow. Before you know it, it's, it's, it's a considerable amount of stock. As an individual, if you're salaried, um, when the money comes in, we say pay yourself first. This is a terrible example that was given, I think is very relevant. God forbid, imagine you have a child and, and your child is unwell and the doctor tells you, you just need to give us 20,000 and the child will be safe. 
and let's say you earn 100,000, are you telling me you'll be unable to raise a 20K? Mm. So you just put your foot on and say, by the way, just assume this 20K does not exist. This is, it, it calls upon all the will you have. Right. So if that money comes in, set aside 10%, then just live on whatever is there. I almost gave a good example. During COVID, people were told you'll earn half your salary. What do you do? You will complain, but you just have to find a way to adjust. And somehow, so convince yourself, yeah. my salary is X, 10% nimetoa, live on that. So what can I cut? It's, sometimes you just have to be desperate. Desperate times call for desperate measures. For desperate measures. Right. And that's the thing, uh, you realize that as well. I have a friend who alikato 30% and made some adjustments, moved house, did all these things. And when 100% came back, I said, you know what? He 30% says I'm going to save. Mm -hmm. Well, good for you. <laughs> it's, not always, it's not always as easy uh, um, because it's, it's normally uh, crazy. But anyway, even as you close, uh, what advice would you give uh, uh, Amos for those businesses who are watching, whether you're the the kiosk, whether you're the, the liquor store, you know, when you're giving that example of um, <laughs> kukula stock, hakuna watu wana sapa kama watu wana uza booze. Kuna pata msa waka me gift, because he said, no, don't worry, one day I'll give you. I had a situation like that with a friend, and the guy went to the most expensive mm. uh, of it and gifted himself. Na kafungu hapo, anakunyo na watu. Uh, and uh, well, he was fired. But still, what advice would you give to these small business owners <laughs> and uh, who, you know, they're, they're smack in the middle of conversations about times are hard, they're feeling it probably, but they want to, they still want to grow, they still want to make it. Um, what, what advice would you give them? Uh, well, I think one of them should be just do a proper evaluation. There's something that we talk about it's a money personality. And the two main ones are spenders and hoarders. So if you're a spender, create an environment where your bad habits cannot survive, okay? If you earn X amount of money, the first thing, deduct money. If you're expanding your business, deduct that money. Get rid- and Put it where? Get rid of that disposable in uh, income. Right. And put it in a plan. Everybody must have a plan. Okay. If my plan is to expand, if t my, my plan this, uh, in the next three months is to now bring in bail instead of buying camera, can I do prepayments when money comes, if I have extra? I do prepayments, deposit the money to that particular person so that I have gotten rid of that disposable income. income. Uh, if you're a holder, you're a person who is very stingy with your money. I mean, do, do, loosen up, you understand? You cannot save your way into richness. <laughs> you, know, you have to take a bit of risk. Mm -hmm. and, and I tell people there's a house help we had who had accumulated her entire year's salary only for her when it comes to the, she came from Western Kenya. And for, for, for just before Christmas, she tells us she's, uh, she's coming with her, 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 her cousin. And she paid bus fare, and they went to the village. Only for her to come, <laughs> come January, she's sending us a text, please send me fare. And she had actually, let me not use the word wasted, she had actually spent all her money. Wow. And now she can't see, she can't put a, a, a name to what she spent it on. So that is cumulative pain, <laughs> you know. You'd rather enjoy your money at, 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 at that particular point and spend all of it. Right. So one of the things <clears throat> I can advise people is, number one, be at a level whereby you have done an evaluation. And know today's challenge for man is, number one, emotional competence and managing distractions. So if you can be able to pull those two, then basically you remain focused in mm. your business. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, uh, uh, Steve, if, you wanna, if you're a small business owner and you want to get, like we talked about in the beginning, a good line of credit, what are the steps you take so that you have a, a nice, good line of credit? Let's keep it very simple. Right. Number one, if you borrow any money, you have to pay because it creates a history. <laughs> Similar to our friends, if I borrow you money, we list today and I don't pay, tomorrow you won't give me the same money. Okay. So same thing applies to businesses, whether you're a Tala or a bank, ETC. And tell them not to pay it away. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Katika <laughs> journalist. <laughs> The debt has disappeared. <laughs> Doesn't work like that. <laughs> Too soon with everything that's happened. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> no, no, the cost, yes, 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 yes. Still valid. Mm -hmm. So number one, do pay your debts on time. If you have to borrow money, think about how you will repay. If 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 you, if you qualify for ten, think about how you will pay for that. I think. So, if, so when you think about how to pay for it, is it? Are you looking at where money is going to come from, or like what's the plan? Like how are you thinking about like how am I going to pay this? Let me give you two examples. Mm -hmm. Our shopkeeper. 
if I buy my bale of unga and I know I will sell it in, in three days. So I know if I take, uh, if I borrow a loan today and I choose seven days to repay, when the money comes in, you can even make those partial payments. Okay. So just to reduce that amount of money. So right. borrow when you have an idea of how you will pay. Mm. Don't, don't take 20 bills and say, by faith, I'm going to sell all of them. If you move one, just slow and steady right. is, is, wins the race. Right. Then last, I will also say, and this is a bit controversial, thinking of what I, do, uh, what I do for a living is, not everything needs to be put on credit. Sometimes you can plan it out. Mm. If, like we said, for example, inflation is bad, now it's probably not the time to be expanding like crazy. So wait it out. When times do improve, because everything that goes up must come down and things will level out, then think about expanding then. There are times you just want to survive. Mm. And when it's crazy like this, sometimes if everything is running and nothing is lit, sometimes there's nothing wrong just being in status quo. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Well, it's uh, about nine o'clock. I'd like to say thank you so much for uh, the time. Uh, I mean, I hope that you at home have learned something. Uh, wait it out. That's my take home. Mimi personally, I fall under the category of spenders. Mimi nikisikia tu kadika neva shop my money. But uh, it helps to have these conversations. Um, and really, um, my friend uh, Roberta actually is the one who told me, and I think you've said it as well, treat money like somebody you, you, you know, you have a relationship with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, you know, make sure you're good to money. And like you said, money goes where it is respected. Respect money, respect even the shilling. Do you know one day I sat and um, me and my cousin, uh, who is very meticulous, she sat down and she told me, like, you see how you normally uh, when I withdraw, squeeze now, I'm in This is how much it's costing you every time. Ato ke angali a balance. Atu chata ya dina ya. But there are banks that ke angali a balance. If nga ten bobi meenda. Fasa kama kuna watu twenty million o kana account ko yu nini. Atu ke angali a balance kumoja nga. I'm part of a sangapi. Crazy. Think about it. But those are people who respect money. Imagine ten bob, but bigger. You can watch this interview again in case you're just joining us and you want some tips. You can watch it over on uh, the tube uh, and YouTube as well. Amos, how can they get in touch with you? Um, my socials are Money Clinic KE, mm -hmm. Money Clinic KE on Instagram. I'm also on TikTok. Huh? Yes, that's yes, where yes. we met. That's huh? where we met. Yes. <laughs> yeah, TikTok. I was like, who's this guy attacking <laughs> me, Nani Jewy? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. TikTok is Money Gossip, but on uh, Instagram is uh, Money Clinic KE. Yeah. And uh, Money Clinic KE is also on Facebook and uh, on, on Twitter. On Twitter. Yeah. And Steve, how can they get in touch with you? Social media mm -hmm. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Tala Kenya. Mm -hmm. And we are also on Google Play Store. So install the app and you can contact us from there. All right. Well, like I said, thank you so much. We appreciate all the feedback. And uh, it's good that uh, think about it before you, you take that credit. Do you really need it? Is it a real emergency? Can you wait it out? Like Steve said, the ups and downs. And we're not saying don't borrow entirely, but relax, wait, think. I always say this when it comes to me when I'm making my decisions. Oga. Cooler, I love to relax. If you still want to make that decision after that, then probably, yeah, it's a decision not to be made. But if it is, what was the thing you said? If it has to be right now? The answer is no. The answer is no. Peace and love. Tomorrow is Thursday. We'll be cooking now. That is a good investment. See you tomorrow. <laughs>